Thanks, Aaron. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our session on kind of an IoT Edge data streaming project that we're putting together here. Uh, today's session is actually a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, you know, we we started with building out the sensor. We then equipped that sensor to start talking MQTT. Uh, but now we're going to take this project and really start to expand it to allow for communications into a multitude of other kind of paths for data uh, utilization and leveraging that data in different contexts. So it, there's a lot to cover, um, but I do want to show you this in action too. So uh, I'm going to kind of push through a bunch of stuff here and talk a little bit about what we're doing, how we do this. And then I'll try to show you how this can be built out pretty seamlessly without a lot of coding to extend all of these different sensor data and telemetry data to a multitude of different platforms with regards to data distribution. So uh, confidentiality, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, you know, I don't think we have any future looking information, but uh, just so you're aware, uh, you know, anything that we talk about that looks like futures, uh, things may change, especially in our current environment. Uh, as Aaron said, I'm Bill McLean. I'm the messaging evangelist here at TIBCO. I oversee uh, the messaging infrastructure and architecture and design, and I've uh, been working with TIBCO for almost about 20 years now. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing. So we started this project with taking this uh, sensor that we've created, and we've extended it to MQTT, specifically uh, leveraging that as the communications backbone for the IoT enablement. The next layer that we're going to do is really take all of that data that's now in MQTT and bridge that into a multitude of other messaging solutions, specifically things within the TIBCO messaging uh, architecture. So being able to take it into something like a TIBCO FTL, where we now can then distribute that data to any of the components within TIBCO messaging, whether it's Kafka, whether it's TIBCO cloud messaging, whether it's EFTL or Pulsar, uh, for our ex current uh, situation, we're just going to take this and extend it to a couple of different areas. Specifically, we're going to be able to consume data via FTL, via our TIBCO cloud messaging, as well as via Kafka. Um, so here's kind of the overview of what I've grabbed at this point. Um, so I have Apache Kafka, the core distribution uh, for that uh, downloaded. Uh, you also can access all of this from our downloads page. I grabbed the bridge for Apache Kafka. I also grabbed the bridge for Eclipse Mosquito. And I have TIBCO FDL Community Edition running here on my Mac. Uh, the other thing that we have to do for this particular project is, is if you want to extend it to TIBCO Cloud Messaging, uh, you can go and sign up for a 330 day trial of TIBCO Cloud Messaging, which is our messaging managed service that provides both FTL and EFTL interfaces. And I'll show you that when we go into the actual project deployment here and how we're using that to send data anywhere and anytime on our managed services layer. So kind of from an architectural perspective, here's what we're looking at. So if you kind of look at the picture, uh, you'll notice that in the bottom is what we've really done up to this point. We've taken that um, MQTT sensor, uh, we've taken the sensor that we've built on our Raspberry Pi, and that's publishing data via MQTT to that MQTT sump sensor topic. What we're going to now do is, is extend all of this into FTL, which will allow us to then distribute this data to any component within TIBCO messaging. Um, and this is all done through configuration and management. Uh, we have bridge components that are built into our messaging layer that allow you to do inline translation of data directly at the messaging layer. So once we uh, start up the Mosquito FTL bridge, now that data is in FTL and on an endpoint, and we can subscribe to that endpoint and push that endpoint to any of the other solutions. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what this looks like, uh, and I'm going to talk you through this a little bit on each piece as we go. Uh, so give me just a second here. Uh, let me stop sharing uh, this, and let me start sharing my desktop here. All right, so there's going to be a lot of kind of different pieces here. So Let's go ahead and take a look. So the very first thing is, is this is our Eclipse Mosquito uh, implementation. So again, here's my Raspberry Pi in this window. If I issue that Raspberry Pi sump command, you'll see that it will issue that into Eclipse Mosquito, and I'll get that message into my Mosquito subscriber. That's what we've been working on and done up to this point. So what we're going to do, though, is, is we've actually now set up a 
bridge between Mosquito and FTL. And this bridge is, is this FM, TIV FM bridge, which is part of the Eclipse Mosquito package that we provide. And all I really am doing is providing it with a connection to the Mosquito server and then a connection to my FTL Realm server. And when I do that, it creates this application and an endpoint that's defined for bridging data into and out of Mosquito. Uh, so now that I have that running, uh, it's simply just starting this process up. There's some configuration options that you can look at with regards to what topics that I want to bring over and what uh, things I want to bridge. So I can provide granularity of what data is coming in and out of the bridge itself. But if I do that now and I go over here and start up, and I'm just going to start up a 10 second uh, water level count. If I do that, now I have an FTL subscriber and you can see that here is the message coming from Eclipse Mosquito directly into FTL. And every single, you know, kind of 10 seconds, you'll continue to get a new message that comes in with the water level that's being presented. So just that simple, I was able to extend my MQTT now into TIBCO FTL. I didn't have to do any coding. I, these are just sample applications that are basically pulling this data in. As you can see, the message format and structure here is pretty raw, uh, but you can make those changes to those applications and read that uh, in a kind of a JSON format or an MQTT structured format as well. So that's the first layer. That's the first piece that we have with regards to extending this to a uh, FTL instance. But from there, I can actually go and dive into other things. So as an example, I have here a bridge that's listening to uh, that MQTT FTL sensor that's publishing data now from my FTL engine and pushing that into my typical cloud messaging. So you can see that it's actually receiving this response from the MQT sensor every second, and it's actually sending that up to Tipco cloud messaging. So if I start a Tipco cloud messaging subscriber here that I basically point to my Tipco cloud messaging channel, and I provide it with my login key, I will now be able to take that data and receive that data via TIBCO cloud messaging. And where this becomes relevant with TIBCO cloud messaging is, is now with what I've done by extending my sensor to Eclipse Mosquito and extending that into TIBCO FTL, I now can send and receive this data anywhere, anytime, anywhere in the world. So if I want to enable, for example, a mobile application where I can have a, a piece of uh, data being sent every second or every 10 seconds or every minute to let me know where the water level is in my sump pump, whether I'm here in Illinois or whether I'm traveling for work in Europe or in uh, South America, I have the ability to enable that simply through the messaging layer that's available uh, on, in TIPCO messaging. The same is true for extending this to other components as well. So as, a, as an example, uh, let's go over and I'm gonna just start up a Zookeeper instance here on my local Mac. I'm gonna start up uh, an, a Kafka broker here that's gonna connect to that. And again, as part of the TIBCO messaging offering, we have native connectors that are built to tie these different components together. So here I have a source connector that's created to create between FTL and Kafka directly. If I start that up, now I'll be able to see and receive data in Kafka just like I would any of the other components. So if I start a subscriber, you should see that data start to flow into the consumer as well as once I start to pull that data in. Yep, and there it is. So here's the actual data. You'll notice that uh, the mapping here is a little different because of it being a binary object. So it's just a, a matter of changing how the mapping is occurring in that particular case. And all I really had to do on the configuration side for Kafka was to look at the uh, connector config that we provide as part of TIBCO messaging. The other thing I have as well is, is you know, created the different uh, uh, different topics and that are there. I'm using our TIBCO MSGMX tool that's a part of our solution as well. And you can see that what I've done is, is I've created essentially a Kafka topic that's called Kafka MQTT Sump Sensor. And my connector is ultimately pulling that data in from that endpoint on FTL and mapping it directly to my MQ Kafka MQTT Sump Sensor. I can do the same in reverse. If I wanted to publish data from Kafka into FTL and go into MQTT, I can create a, a sync connector that would pull data out of Kafka and bring it into an endpoint and do all of that. So 
all of this is bi-directional. All of this allows you to be able to pull data in and out. And all of this allows you to basically come in and use that architecture that we've described here, where FTL becomes kind of that centralized hub to extending any of the solutions for message distribution to any of the other solutions. So whether I want to extend Kafka to MQTT, I can do that directly. If I want to extend MQTT to Pulsar or Pulsar to TIPCO cloud messaging, I can bridge all of these for both on-premise and cloud. I can do this in the cloud with Kubernetes deployments, all of which are available and part of the TIPCO messaging offering. Now, next week, uh, as we go into one step further, we're gonna take a step back out of the messaging layer and kind of go beyond communications. And I'm actually gonna have one of my colleagues, Jesus, come on and talk a little bit about our project error uh, solution that allows for enablement of IoT, not just for communications, but for the actual deployment and management of the devices themselves. Um, so we're gonna talk about that next week. And if you, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, but here's a large list of information that you can look at with regards to how to sign up for typical cloud messaging, how to get access to the products that we showed here, and some quick access links to talking about how to deploy these components into both on-premise and cloud environments with our typical community offerings. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over for questions. Like I said, it was a pretty large whirlwind uh, at this point for what we were doing uh, just because of the sheer breadth of what we were trying to accomplish today. But if you have any questions, please feel free and happy to answer anything that you have. <music>